This is the third video in the series for Excel 2013 and again everything that I'm doing here also applies to 2007-2010 as there is not much difference and these are just the basic ideas. Now in the previous video I introduced you to the concept of fill handle so I'll just do that one part. So I could highlight things like this. Look for fill handle and it fills up the numbers for me depending on what increments I wanted it to do and it also does with Monday it fills up the days of the week and also the months and the quarters now that is a nice feature of fill handle but I want to sh introduce you to a better reason why you want to use fill handle is for calculations so in this cell A7 what I want to do a simple math I want to add 1 plus 2 and I want to put the result here and up here I would like to do 2 plus 4 that will be 6 and 3 plus 6 and on and on so up here I'm going to do equal take my mouse click on A5 because I want to add whatever is in the cell A5 I don't we don't type one because we use cell reference plus sign and I use A6 now you could have done the summation here too but in this one it's only two cells so I'll just do it simply and I use check mark now instead of doing all of those calculation you look for fill handle left click and hold the left click on the mouse and then you just drag and you'll find that all the calculations are done so let's click on this and what I'm gonna do is I'll go to formulas and I'll click on show formulas so you can see the calculation a5 to a6 when it next when next cell a became changed to B but you see the row 5 and 6 didn't change because when you go sideways fill handle understands that you are changing columns so it changes the columns in the calculation not the rows so you see 5 and 6 stays the same B changes to C because it's in C D changes and then D changes to E I'll turn the show formulas off again I'll do up here a summation function so I'll come back to home you can use it from here but I'll come back to home and I'll click on the sum auto sum button because I'm in line where my calculation is going and you see it makes a guess in this case the guess is right I do want to sum all of them up so I'll leave it as it is and I'll use check mark now I'll look for the fill handle and I'll copy it down and now let's go back to formulas and then use show formulas and I'll scroll sideways so you see that whole sum calculation was copied down however when it changes the row in the calculation when it went down the 5 changes to 6 and the 6 changes to 7 so when you use fill handle down it understands that you go into the next row so it will change the rows in the calculation and not the columns because the columns G is the end and A is the first column so this way all I have to do is do the calculation one time and then just fill handle down I'll press the show formula and I'll go sideways again I'll do this step one more time I'll click here from the home I click on auto sum highlights everything which is good now instead of using the fill handle like this I can highlight it like that and below the auto sum there is a fill button and I can say go down now this only works for calculations you cannot use it for these words it only works when you have a calculation so fill handle is very practical now what I've done is I've added a new sheet and on this sheet I have an example I'm going to increase the zoom a little so this example will bring in all the things we've talked about in from the first video together so I've got a example here in which there are products shirt pant jacket there's a regular price and there's some discount on it certain dollar amount is to be removed so I need to figure out what is my sale price and there are two different types of taxes that I need to figure out say for example there could be only be one and then I need to figure out what is the total so sale price which is equal so you always have to do equal to do calculation now in your mind you should know the math part so if I know sale price is equal 
to the regular price. I click on the cell which has the regular price. I don't care that it is B2. You need to make sure you click on the cell and then minus discount because you went in the store, the price is 55 and I need to remove $10 from it. So this is the calculation and I use the check mark and there it is 45 which is right and there's my formula. Now the tax which is 4.5 percent. 4.5 percent of what? Of the sale price. So I'll click equal sale price multiplied by 4.5 and the percentage symbol which is shift and 5. Or you could type 0 0.45 which is 4.5 divided by 100 which is I think 0.45. So you can type that too if you want. No, it will be 0 0.045 if you wanted to type it like that. Now I'll use check mark. So that is the tax which needs to be added to the sale price. The second tax is 3.5 percent. So I put equal sale price multiplied by 3.5 percent. And I use the check mark. And there it is. Now what is my total pay? My total pay is sale price plus the taxes. So I can just highlight it like this and I can hit the auto sum and there it is if I click on the cell it shows me that it does the calculation summation of D2 all the way up to F2 now I highlight all of my calculations and I can use the fill handle you have to be careful here that you only highlight what you need to do fill handle because I don't want to highlight this because these are my numbers somebody actually entered it so you don't, if you do fill handle like that, numbers below it may start to change. So be careful here. Just highlight your calculations. Look for fill handle and copy it all down. And there it is. I have all of my calculations done. I can highlight all my numbers, just the numbers, and I can hit this dollar sign. Now it will put the dollar symbol including the dot zero zero. You can click in the drop down button and you see there are different symbols like pound, euro, Chinese, French and you can go to more and you'll find in the more button there are lots of other symbols and then from the symbol here you can choose whatever kind you want and there are many different symbols available and you can also choose the decimal places how many decimal places do you want you can change the decimal places even from here using this symbol increase or decrease. You ever change your mind about the symbols? You can just change this word accounting here back to general. We'll talk about this a little bit more again. So that's the dollar symbol. I'll use one more example. So you can actually pause the video and type these examples if you wanted to do this. I'll just increase the with here. So in this example I've got some people who are working so they somebody worked 35 hours, 40 hours and they are making $18 an hour, $20 an hour. So I need to figure out how much total pay they made and there are some taxes that I need to figure out and then I need to figure out how much money they're going to take home. So gross pay is equal to hours multiplied by the number of hours. So that is they work 35 hours and they make $18 an hour so I need to multiply that not addition because that will be a problem they need to be paid multiplication and then I can use the check mark so that's the total now I go to the next line you could do the fill handle for every column however it's better to do it all together once you finish that whole line so tax A is 3% 3% of what 3% of the pay so I do equal pay multiply by 3% or 0 0.03 if you wanted to just type the 0 0.03 rather than the percentage check mark taxed B is equal to pay multiply by 2.5% and then tax 3 so I go to that cell equal pay multiply by 8% and I'll use the check mark now what is my net pay? My net pay is the gross pay minus all the taxes. So this is where you can start thinking of the brackets because I'll do equal gross pay minus and I'll start the bracket 
and I'll put all the taxes together in the bracket. So you see this is a little easier to understand when somebody looks at it that D2 is what the gross pay minus E2 which is tax F2 and G2. So all the taxes have been added together in the bracket and now I'm going to remove it all together. You will get the right answer if you did D2 minus E2 minus F2 minus G2. However, it just looks very complicated when somebody looks at it. And I'll use the check mark enter, and there is my result. Now, you could do the sum here too if you wanted to for the taxes. So I'll show you another variation. So I do equal gross pay minus summation of, and I start the bracket. Now, when you are doing calculations like this with sum, you cannot use the auto sum. The auto sum is only good when you are only doing summation. When you're doing combinations of summations or combination with something else, that is not really useful. So now I do D2 minus sum, start the bracket. I highlight the three taxes and I close the bracket. So either way, this will work. Just remember, whenever you have a range, you have to have a function in front of it because the computer has no clue what is it that you wanted to do with that range. I'll use check mark. Now I can highlight all of my calculation. Not the numbers, just the calculations. Look for fill handle and I copy it down. And if I want, again, I can put the dollar signs on it. Even up here, I can highlight it and I can put the dollar sign. Now the benefit of Excel is that say if I realize that this guy John had worked say 38 hours and not 35 so I just change the number to 38 and I can use the check mark enter here. As soon as I did that you see all the other numbers changed because all of these cells have the cells in their calculations not the actual numbers so anytime these numbers change everybody else will start to change. So if I change this 20 to 21 and as soon as I hit enter all these numbers will start to change and there it is. And if I wanted to print any of my sheets all of these are called sheets I can go to file and then I can choose print and then in the print it shows me the print preview here in the corner and I can choose to print by default it will only print the active sheet and you can change this to print the entire workbook. Entire workbook means all the sheets and you can also choose to print selection because sometimes you don't want to print the whole sheet. You can just highlight a few rows or cells and it will only print what you have selected and you can choose how many copies you want here. So I can go back here. So if you had highlighted something and you go back to file and print you can choose to print only the selection and you see it only shows me the two here on the right side so that's it for this video in the next video we'll add some more things thanks for watching